Hi, I'm Ed Keeter, owner of Keeter Consulting in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I assist people with researching their small business ideas, developing business plans, and launching their businesses. If you enjoy this video, there is a lot more information like it related to self-employment that you can find through my website and blog at www.keterconsulting.com. Today's video podcast deals with one of the most important and frequently most intimidating aspects of operating a small business, record keeping. Most of us start our own business because we have a special skill we want to use or because we like the idea of making our passion our paycheck by working with a product, service, or industry that we especially enjoy. Very few of us start our own small businesses because of our love for detailed record keeping. Tracking things like income, expenses, and taxes tends to be more frustrating than entertaining. However, record keeping is still absolutely essential for running a legal, sustainable, and profitable small business. With that in mind, I've worked to develop the simplest record keeping system possible. It's easy to learn. You can maintain it with very little time and effort as long as you make record keeping a regular part of your daily routine. I hope you find it helpful. There are two ways of approaching record keeping for your business. The first is to focus on only the bare bones minimum amount of information you need to record in order to remain in good standing with the government. That's fine, but a bit short sighted. With a very small amount of additional effort, you can capture incredibly valuable data that will help you to identify ways to improve the stability and profitability for your business. More on that in a moment. At a minimum, you need to record all of the income received by your business, the expenses incurred by your business, the amount of sales tax you've collected if you sell goods that involve sales tax, and your vehicle business mileage information. Depending on the specifics of your business, there may be a few additional factors, but for the vast majority of us, these are the critical elements. If you are a customer of Michigan Rehabilitation Services, the Michigan Commission for the Blind, or the Department of Veterans Affairs, and one of those agencies is assisting you with launching your business, you'll also need to record your net income from the business on a monthly basis for them for some period after launch. As I said, since you're already required to track those things, it's a simple task to dig a little deeper to help better understand where your money is coming from and where it is going. This can help you to identify inefficiencies and underexploited opportunities which can improve your overall profitability. If your business offers more than one type of product or service, it makes sense to look at a couple of different factors. First, which products or services do you sell the most of? If you're a restaurant, are you selling two fountain drinks for every one bottled drink? Do you have any products or services you provide that aren't purchased enough by customers to justify the time, cost, and effort of keeping them in your menu or catalog? Next, what are your per unit profit margins on each of the things you sell? Which things are most profitable to you? Which products or services require the most time to manufacture or provide? This helps to key in on underperforming products or services so you can either refine how you make or deliver them, adjust how you price them, or eliminate them from your listed offerings. On a tangentially related note, tracking your income and expenses lets you spot potential cash flow problems where bills come due before the revenue needed to pay them is available. This also helps you to compare your projected performance against your actual performance. The system I've put forward is as straightforward, common sense, and plain English as I know how to make it. Whether you use it in a hard copy format or electronically on a PC, it all comes down to a set of eight folders and one calendar. The folders are for your daily checklist, monthly money in log, invoices, set aside worksheets, monthly money out log, receipts, monthly vehicle mileage log, and blank forms for making fresh copies as needed. The daily checklist is exactly what it sounds like. A checklist of all the activities you need to do each day from a bookkeeping standpoint. It also has a notes section to let you keep a journal of basic questions, ideas, and observations throughout the year that you can use for quarterly or annual review to help refine your business processes. If the checklist is completed each day, you know you're on top of your records. The Money In Log is a monthly log tracking all of the income your business received during a specific month. Each time you're paid, record the date of the payment, which customer it's from, the purpose of the payment, for example, grant writing services or snow removal, how the payment was made, cash check or charge, and the amount of the payment. You can use multiple sheets if necessary. At the end of the month, record the total amount for the month. The invoice is the document listing what goods or services you sold to the customer and at what price. It serves as a receipt for the customer and a means of tracking your sales and if and when full payment was received. As an aside, it's often helpful to think creatively when designing your invoice. I helped one recent business owner make his customer copy of the invoice into a checklist that reviewed every service he provided to the customer 
which helped the customer better appreciate the quality and value of the work he was paying for. We then placed a coupon for a discount on their next purchase on the back side of the invoice. Both of these enhancements help with repeat business. The set-aside worksheet is the most complicated part of the bookkeeping system, and it's still pretty easy. The set-aside worksheet is designed to make sure that each time you deposit that day's income, you set aside the portion that you'll need to pay for things like sales tax on goods sold, general business or personal income taxes, and large or infrequent expenses like repairing or replacing your computer, cell phone, or vehicle. For the vast majority of my customers, I recommend three things. First, I advise them to set up a dedicated business bank account with a checking account and two separate savings accounts. Next, I advise them to deposit any and all income earned by the business every day directly into their checking account before doing anything else with the money. Finally, I advise them to transfer whatever portion of that income they deposited is necessary into one savings account that is strictly for taxes and to transfer whatever portion of that income is necessary into another savings account that is specifically for their large and infrequent expenses like vehicle repair and replacement. For taxes, a good rule of thumb is to assume 33% for personal taxes and of course 6% of income for all goods that require sales tax if that's applicable to your business. Of course, it's always a good idea to review this with your accountant to make sure you're addressing the unique needs of your business. For the large and infrequent set-aside amount, my approach is to estimate the average annual cost of all those goods and services and then divide that amount by your projected annual revenue. This will give you the percentage of total revenue that those expenses comprise. You can then set aside that percentage out of every daily deposit and know that you're staying on schedule and have money on hand when you need it. The Money Out Log is a monthly log tracking all of your business expenses, phone, gas, internet, office supplies, and so on. Each time you purchase something, record the date of the purchase, from whom it was purchased, for example, Office Max, what was purchased, for example, a website hosting fee, how payment was made, cash, check, or charge, and check number if you used a check, and the amount of the payment. Again, you can use multiple sheets if necessary. At the end of the month, record the total amount for the month. I can't stress enough how important it is to hang on to your receipts. In my bookkeeping kits, I include a large envelope for my customers where they can immediately place receipts after making purchases. If your business makes a lot of purchases, setting up separate monthly or even daily or weekly envelopes can help stay organized and keep the receipts manageable. The mileage log is yet another monthly log that is exactly what it sounds like. This log is used to track business travel. Simply record the date, destination, and purpose of the trip and the starting and ending odometer readings. Multiple sheets can be used for each month as needed. I recommend tracking each month separately from the others, however. One frequent challenge that people have is tracking mileage when their business travel is interspersed with personal travel, things like errands and ferrying kids to school and back. A good workaround here is to use a tool like MapQuest or Google Maps to calculate what your business travel would have been if you had not added on personal travel as well. Keep in mind that your business expenses and your business travel log should match up perfectly. Don't get into a situation where on June 2nd your mileage log said you were in Ann Arbor while your money out log says you had a business lunch in Lansing. And that's it. The key to keeping your record keeping running smoothly is to tackle it every single day. Updating your money in, money out, set asides, mileage, and other information is pretty easy and it only takes a few minutes when you do it in a timely manner. It's when you let the pile of receipts and paid invoices pile up for a few weeks before dealing with them that things get lost and information gets mixed up. Save yourself the headache and handle your bookkeeping as soon as possible. If you like this system, you can download a hard copy of this tutorial and copies of all of the forms described here by visiting www.keterconsulting.com. I'd love to hear your. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your own small business adventure.